Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanalaza Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury333, and today we're going to have what appears to be an apparently fairly long game between Adam 2 and Dorsh on Onyx Cauldron. And I should point out that Dorsh's Elo now is somewhere around the 1900 mark. I mean, Dorsh has apparently improved a lot in the last few weeks, I guess. I mean, they have been playing a lot. I have noticed a lot of the games that are on the replay system are Dorsh's games, so good on them. They've been getting a lot of practice, and apparently it's been paying off. So let's begin. Dorsh starting out with the Amphib Plant, and Adam 2 going with Gunships right off the bat. Wow, okay, that's not the most unusual thing in the world. Onyx Cauldron is a larger map, so it can work. It's just not super typical. Against Amphib, though, it's... Well, we'll see if Dorsh goes for boys, because the typical thing that happens with Gunships... Gunships either will go for Banshees, which actually it is what Adam 2 is going for. It's going to say possibly also Rapiers. Rapiers pretty heavily get hurt by boys, but Banshees, on the other hand... I think scallops work well against them. Anglers would work fairly well against them just to keep them out of range. And a couple blast wings right out of the bat. So Adam 2 going straight for a bit of bit of harassment. Not so much They're not gonna try to win with the blast wings. This is not a blast wing rush. There's only two blast wings, bit of scouting, maybe be able to blow up one or two things. Nothing major. Well, set on fire one or two things. Nothing really major. And both players just kind of expanding out, although Adam 2 apparently a little bit slower than Dorsh. Dorsh right to be paranoid, although, oh, no, oh, I see, okay, Adam 2 just using these for scouting purposes. Sending them out just so Adam 2 knows exactly what's going on, or at least has a decent idea of when Dorsh expands to relatively common expansion points. And Dorsh scouting directly, well, oh, okay, there we go, Adam 2 with the northeast corner, that's where they want the blast wing there to know exactly when they're going to get hit. Or if they're going to get hit. If Adam 2 goes along the easy path to the northeast, Adam 2 will know about it and then set those units on fire. And then probably have already defended it. Although it looks like, no, they aren't actually setting up to defend at this point. Interesting. Well, as of now, it looks like Adam 2 just continue to expand. They are going for the Banshees. A little slowly, though. They are not prioritizing it, not pushing for a rush. I mean, at this point... Dorsh knows they're going gunship. And is going pretty heavy on the ducks. Ah, okay, there's the anglers. Right, that is going to be a bit more of a problem. I really want to see how this pans out. I'm curious how angler works against Banshee. Against Rapier, I would say, yeah, go for angler. Great option. Actually, go for angler boy. That'd be a great option. Against Banshee, though, could work. Would probably discourage them from getting a bit too hasty. But Banshees are fairly resilient. Oops. They have, like, 800 health or 900 health, which is fairly high. And for how quickly they can move and how much damage they deal, which, for reference, is about 62 per second. Like, against an angler? Angler will probably be okay, but it's still a little bit tricky. That's a neat little strip. I didn't even notice that was on there. Anyway, sorry. I'm getting distracted by the... By the effects on the units. I, you don't see anglers very much. I'm actually kind of surprised there's that little teal strip on the side. That's kind of neat looking. And it looks like we're going to have the first encounter between the two players with military units. And the Banshee... Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that's not something to be my messed with. Bit of a reload time, but that's still... That's still scaring Adam 2 away, and Adam 2 also sees that there was a bit of a threat coming over to the northeast. Blastwing went off. Kill anything? Looks like it damaged the conch, but the conch managed to move away in time, so not the biggest deal, but the conch has still been spotted out enough that Adam 2 will stop it. But now with Dorsh in the center, I mean, that... Oh, what else is happening here? That razor... No, once again, forcing the Banshees away. There just isn't that critical mass of Banshees required to get through anti-air yet. And with the anglers being built up, there may not be. Hovercraft switch from Adam 2, which kind of makes sense, I guess. Though I, I'm i afraid their hovercraft placement was a little bit backwards. Hopefully that doesn't cause any major problems, but I'm fairly certain that units can't really pass through this area right here, which could be an issue. So that is... that's kind of unfortunate. Hopefully that won't cause any problems, but it probably will. At least it'll slow things down a bit. I mean, between the turn radius and the pathing problems, yeah, that's just... That hurts. 
Dorsh, are they going to go for the attack? I think they are. No, they're just... They're just waiting to see if what's coming out. Is there anything coming out? No, there's nothing coming out. Let's go attack the expansion area. See what's going on there over to the southwest. Although the northeast is fairly secure, Adam 2 needs a lot more energy. You see, there's so much excess from this. This, Well, it's more of the energy is not sufficient. I mean, the wind generators are not quite enough. Where is that energy? I don't know if Adam 2 is noticing it. They have Okay, they're building solar collectors. That's good. But even then, still not great. And ducks forcing the crane away. Or, yeah, they just forced it away. They didn't kill it. But still, forcing that crane away, getting the expansion gone. Oh, never mind. Now it's dead. And fortunately for them, fortunately for the blast wing, it takes a little while to accelerate and decelerate, stopping it from actually hitting the duck. So those ducks have pretty much cleared out the southwest side of the map. Dorsh is doing a really good job keeping that clear and just taking the economy. And boys as well, because as you saw before, boys versus, well, boys versus rapiers primarily. But yeah, boys basically beat rapiers, but that's not what Adam 2 is going for. Going for the hovercrafts instead, and the scalpels against boys. Ooh, it's going to come down to range. Like, it'll take... It'll basically take two shots to for the scalpel to... Oh, not quite kill the boy. It'll be three shots. Just barely three shots. And the range difference is actually negligible. Oh, there's no range difference at all. So scalpels might be able to dodge... I well, think should be able to kite out the boy. But still, that's going to be really tricky. And no, they won't be able to kite out the boy. Quite the opposite. Dodge it slightly, I suppose. But yeah, there's that 6th health boy, which... How the heck did that thing die? Is that 6th health? It was fine. That was weird. And it wasn't like the defend. Oh, did... No, the defender just finished up. I mean, now it'll die in two shots, because it wasn't at full health. And now that scalpels have been shown, Dorsh just going straight for the Grizzly. Not even worrying about it at all. Just going for that Grizzly, because... They have the economy for it at this point. I mean, they're kind of doing the snuggle base thing, except with the addition, except with the addition of the boys for anti-gunship, which makes sense. And I guess kind of as anti-scalpel. I mean, they they're not they're doing okay. They are scaring Adam too off, but really, this isn't that big of a deal. The scalpels can't take care of the boys without too much issue, forcing them off and into halberds, which is a much better option for dealing with the boys. But the Grizzly is going to be the problem. The Halberds should be able to get hit by the Grizzly's beam, not take too much damage. But still, it's a bit of an issue. Ooh. Oh. No angler support on that gun on that Grizzly. Although, unfortunately, Dorsh is kind of keeping that hidden. So Adam 2 can't really know in advance that they need to get that Banshee over there. Get the Banshee Force over to get rid of the Grizzly. Actually, they can just take the Banshee Force. No, well, not quite. Okay, now they can. The Grizzly's out of AA range. There is an angler right here. That's still a bit of a concern, but not much, actually. We'll see if the Banshees go in when the Grizzly's found, but I kind of doubt it. I think that Adam 2 is a bit too worried about getting hit by the anti-air. But those Halberds doing the trick, keeping that Grizzly occupied. I mean, they obviously can't be firing while trying to not get killed by it, but... That's gonna... Ooh. No, Adam 2 not quite microing that out. Like, they need to micro out Fire State stuff in order to make sure that... Or stopping and starting in order to make sure to time it between the grizzly shots. But they weren't. There's a lot of micro that could be done in that situation. The, the grizzlies should have a hard time dealing with the halberds. Like, the halberds basically... They, Adam 2 knows when the grizzly's about to fire again. Reload bars are... Reload bars are public knowledge, to my knowledge. I, I, I recall them being public knowledge... It's not been that long since I last played. But yeah, that's... The Halberds... It's kind of tricky to micro that out, but yeah, if you stop them right as the as the Grizzly would fire, then it would be ideal. Or actually stop them a little before so that they get the armor bonus, because I don't think they get the armor bonus immediately at stopping. We'll have to check, though, next time they start firing. I'm pretty sure they have to completely close up, and that... But that would still be so cool if that was done. It'd be such a cool way of microing it out. And the Banshees did escape north, go down, get the commander, and the commander is probably dead. 
Yeah, this, this commander is pretty much done. Valiant effort, but now the commander has completely died. So Dorsh with no commander and a quite a bit of a weaker economy. They haven't expanded to the southwest. They stopped Adam II from expanding there, but did not expand there themselves. They've been focusing so much on pushing forward. The Grizzly is getting close to Adam II's base. I mean, threatening the commander, but Adam II doesn't care as much. Their commander is not as big of a proportion of their economy as Dorsh's was. And, well... Yeah, it's really not as big of a concern. Although that halberd pretty much just went to die. What is Adam 2 trying to do? Got a stinger up to get rid of the grizzly. Have the banshees to get rid of the grizzly. Oh, no anglers! No anglers in position. These banshees are pretty much going to have a field day, but they are going to take a while to get through the grizzly. Where are the nearest anglers? Not moving! I guess they're relying on ducks and the grizzly itself, which might actually work. Oh, yeah, it will work. Okay, that works. Never mind. No need for anglers, apparently. But we do have Banshees coming in again. Adam 2 will be building up more Banshees soon, and a Penetrator coming up to counter that Grizzly. Makes sense. I mean, one giant beam weapon deserves another. And now we'll see just how Scalpels and Boys work out. It looks like Scalpels do, in fact, kite boys better. Boys. They kite boys better. Oh, Dorsh pointing out this is actually... Yeah, this is actually an old... Angler was buffed in the most recent patch. I... Th I'm not entirely sure what the buffs are offhand. It was something along the lines of being just... I think faster or cheaper. I'm not entirely sure. I'd have to double check. But yes, they were slightly buffed in the most recent patch. If there's... Okay, there's never going to be downtime, so I'll have to check it at the end after the game is over. Because I can't check it right now. There is no downtime. Dorsh pushing in, but that's really kind of blocked off. The Stinger is scaring away the Grizzly, and looks like no further Grizzlies are on the way. Dorsh is not just pumping out Grizzly after Grizzly after Grizzly. They are instead just pumping out Ducks. They don't really have the economy to pump out Grizzlies. Expanding to the southwest, but not really able to secure it. The Ducks over should be able to get rid of the Scalpels. The Scalpel AoE is still a thing, though. It was tracking that was nerfed, not area of effects, and... Some difference that makes. So, yeah. Those ducks managing to push in. But honestly, how many... Okay, 880 cost worth of ducks. Well, scalpels are like 300 each. So, actually, that's... Now, four scalpels equals that giant mass of ducks. For cost. So, yeah, I guess the scalpels counter the ducks. Sorry, the ducks counter the scalpels. But that makes sense. Raiders counter skirmishers, typically. But with these numbers... Nope, the ducks are done. The ducks have no chance... The Grizzly, however, is probably okay. The Penetrator being one of the biggest threats it has to deal with right now. Actually, probably the biggest threat. The Penetrator, much, much frailer, but deals twice the damage. 1,500 from the Grizzly, 3,000 from the Penetrator. So that's three shots, and the Grizzly is down. Of course, it takes forever for that to happen. When does... Ah, I'm too not targeting that. Nah, just out of range. Okay, Adam 2 not focusing on getting rid of that Grizzly. Sure, they'd like to, but they're not focusing on it. And now, Adam 2... Okay, Adam 2 with a lot of reclaim. That's where they're getting their economy from. Right now, Dorsh has the territory, turning it into an economy advantage as quickly as they can, but there is a fair amount of reclaim. Oh, was that commander reclaim? No, it's not. There's still the commander corpse from Dorsh, which is a juicy 400 medal worth of reclaim. And no cranes nearby to take it, no conches nearby to take it either. These anglers aren't even defending it. Actually, okay, there's the conch. And it's not taking it! What the heck, Dorsh? You've got free reclaim and you got more than enough power to use it. No factory switch from Dorsh. We don't see any air switch, we don't see any additional changes to ground. The Grizzly has been kind of scared away. The Penetrator is not something to be trifled with. I mean, the duck can't, or a duck, could just stop it for 20 seconds. But it doesn't look like Dorsh wants to do that. And Adam, too, throwing a bunch of Banshees away, trying to get rid of this set of ducks here. This not working out. Banshees, while they may not be especially d deterred by ravens... Or, sorry, not ravens. Well, they're not going to be deterred by ravens at all. 
They're not especially deterred by razors or especially deterred by super dedicated anti-air. They are more often deterred by flex AA and things like Stardusts. Stuff that can hit splash damage into the air at all is typically really good against them. Quickly. Like, rapidly hit them. Because that's just... That's the thing they have a problem with, is they're fairly resilient and fairly quick, so they can get away from razors easily enough, and with, like, ten of them, they can just destroy every razor they see. Same with anglers and gremlins and anything else anti-air. But when you're dealing with, and tarantulas, for instance, tarantulas are the biggest one I can think of offhand. But when you're dealing with... with stuff like ducks or warriors or redbacks... It's surprisingly effective against Banshees. And Dorsh coming in once again, stopping the, or rather distracting the Grizzly from hitting the Penetrators, but Halber's doing what they can. The Penetrators getting distracted by the Ducks, able to get rid of a few, but those Scalpels would have had no problem. Not sure why Adam 2 is not targeting that Grizzly. They, okay, I guess in this case they want to get the splash damage off the Penetrators, but still. I'm a bit surprised they haven't, before this, been targeting the Grizzly. Now they're targeting the Grizzly. When it honestly matters the least. I feel like there's a lot of small micro errors that Adam 2's been making, and Dorsch, they might be starting to take advantage of this. I mean, that Grizzly is still alive. The Penetrators are both dead. That's a thousand metal each. I mean, that's as expensive as the Grizzly. Adam 2 does have the reclaim to work with, but they haven't actually started taking advantage of it yet. So Dorsch in a very strong position has total map or almost total map control. The northeast they still haven't even challenged yet, which is surprising to me. The oh, there's a nice little fusion plant in the water, because why not? So they haven't challenged the northeast yet. But the southwest, they've got they haven't really had to try to secure it too much, but they basically have it. And a doomsday Whoa! Doomsday machine coming up from Adam 2. That's highly unusual. I I don't know, that's now that Grizzly once again just at decent health. The Halberds not taking it out, but still pushing it back once again. I mean, that's the thing. This Grizzly has had a hard time getting around. Adam 2 able to just get an army built up, get another Penetrator, but once again, that's more of a threat to the Grizzly. Okay, now we see Dorsch has actually switched over to Heavy Tank Factory. Proxy Heavy Tank Factory getting up some pillagers for the purpose of just, I guess, getting rid of this. Do they know about the Doomsday Machine? They don't, actually. They don't know anything's there. They have no idea of anything untoward. But they have the pillager now. And Dorsh, once again, with a mass of ducks coming in here. And once again, getting scared off by the Scalpels and Penetrator. Although the ducks probably could have gone in from there. The scalpels were on reload time, but... No. Okay, there we go. Getting the grizzly to eat off the shots. Then rushing in with the ducks? No. Surprisingly not. These guys have got, like, what, 10 second reload time? Yeah, 10 second reload time. There's plenty of time for those ducks to get in and deal some damage. But yeah, pillagers coming in here and stopping... Oh, are they not stopping this? Now it looks like they're not completely stopping the pylon. I mean, if those ducks walk in and start scouting out, they will see enough of the pillagers. Should be able to hit accurately. But that's not happening at this point. Not what we're seeing right now. Adam 2 going to the north. I mean, they have the north relatively under their control, so they can at least attack from there, go around. That does open up their main base. But with the DDMs in place, that might actually work out okay. I mean, one of the DDMs is up. What is its fire range, anyway? Oh. Is that it? That's, that can't be it. Range, 650. Oh, yeah, it is. How about that? Okay, so I guess it actually isn't that long range. It's not a giant artillery piece. It is purely a defensive structure. But here we have there Adam 2 to the north taking that out. Surprisingly, no one's really expanded this metal spot. Dorsh was clearly trying to, but that's not working out. The scalpel's putting a stop to that. And any counterattack from Dorsh? No. Defensive maneuvers. No counterattack. Half a dozen ducks getting sent up to the north to deal with the scalpels. Or never mind. No, they are actually going for a counterattack. That makes a bit more sense. 
which should be very effective. The Scalpel's out of position. The Penetrators won't be able to stop the Ducks. They might, if they're lucky with the Beam. Actually, they're going to be lucky with the Beam from the looks of it. Ah, not lucky enough. The Ducks should be able to get some damage in. But unfortunately, Dorsh not paying attention to those Ducks and getting them hit by Lotuses. When you have that few Ducks, you kind of have to be worried about what each of them is doing. Oh, Silencer and a Nuke is on the order of 5,000 metal. Ooh, what are we dropping here? Okay, so P Valkyrie's coming up. Looks like we're going to be dropping Reapers into Adam 2's base. Dorsh going for a Reaper drop. Not a common thing to do, but then again, this sort of game has been a little unusual overall. So I guess Dorsh has gone for the Gunship Switch as well, as we can clearly see from the Valkyries. And the Grizzly finally goes down. But that was occupying a lot of Adam 2's attention. Is Adam 2 going to go for a counterattack now that the Grizzly is gone? Now that one of their biggest threats is gone? And Dorsh has to hurry up with this Reaper drop because they have no time. Adam 2 is going to probably take advantage of the situation and just push out. Assuming that no further Grizzlies were built. And they are kind of doing so with the Banshees. There are only about four Banshees here. Well, three in the front here, but still. Able to get rid of the anti-air enough. The Penetrator is pushing forward for artillery in the main, the main line combat. So overall, Adam 2 starting to push back hard. Try and get rid of these. Okay, it's not going to get rid of these at all. The Doomsday Machines are not going down. The Pillagers will have no chance of dealing with them. And Adam 2, what are you What are you doing with these Banshees? I mean, really, what are you doing with the Banshees here? Well, at any rate, Adam 2 finally putting some Urchins into this lake. That lake has been a major problem for them. Although I don't think the Urchins would have stopped the Grizzly. At least it'll stop Ducks from just casually walking through. And a Behemoth as well? What are you... Okay. That's... I don't even... And another... Okay, another Grizzly is up. That makes sense. I'm a bit surprised that there's only one Grizzly at a time, though. That Dorsh is not just massing Grizzlies. Not anymore, given that Reaper's... Actually, no. Heavy Tank's not active. Yeah, why are there no Grizzlies? And where is the drop? Catable up for Adam 2. Trying to get rid of this southeast side... Or southwest side, sorry. But why... What is going on with these Vindicators? Not Valkyries. Vindicators. My mistake. I don't see them anywhere. There's like... Yeah. Okay. Pillager over to the north to get rid of the... Okay, I guess it makes sense. But nothing into the main base. Reapers in the main base would tear it to shreds. That would do a number on Adam 2's base right now. But it looks like, no, they're trying to go through the front door. That's how it's going to be done, apparently. I will, the Urchins against the Grizzly, like I said before, will not be a major deterrent. But at this point, Dorsh just positioning themselves around the map. If they can... Probably they can break down this area right here. Or break down... Actually, you know what I'm thinking of. The Southwest is probably more vulnerable and more important. Reaper's coming in, taking a lot of damage. But yeah, the Do Doomsday Machines providing the biggest threat to the Reapers. And that's one Fusion Reactor down. Adam 2 still has more than enough energy to power... Oh, one of the DDMs did go down. Actually, that means both of them went down. So at least that stops the Doomsday Machines. They still have their short-range heat ray, but not that long-range cannon that was really dealing with the Reapers without issue. However, losing four Reapers in the process, that's a huge amount of reclaim for Adam 2 right now. And there's no easy way that Dorsey is going to be able to take it. Adam 2 already eating it up. 2,400 metal worth of reclaim. That is going to be pretty much the rest of the game. These, these particular quills are going to be busy for the rest of the game. And an ultimatum coming in. Looks like probably to get rid of the Heavy Tank Oh no, the Heavy Tank Factory is already down. I'm really surprised that we did not see anything to do with a drop. We had the Valkyrie, sorry, the Vindicators, send a pillager to the north, and that was about it. And unfortunately, between the cat I mean, the ultimatum, I'm not sure what target it has at this point. There's not much. Heavy tank factory is dead. The heavy tanks built from the factory are all dead. I guess the Grizzly would be an option, but the ultimatum is nowhere near it. 
Grizzly wouldn't be a bad option, though. Ultimatum deals, I think, 8,000. Oh, oh, no, never mind. Only 1,200. I'm mistaken. It's first to Scuttle. Scuttle deals 8,000 damage. But we do not see a Scuttle assist right now, and with Dorsh going once again for Duck Boy, not really going for Grizzlies. Especially with the Catapult there. The Catapult being really good anti-mass unit stuff. Like, that's... If it hit the Ducks, at least, it would destroy all of them. Or easily take care of all of them. Oh no, the Heat Ray is not even a thing either. Okay, never mind, that DDM's completely dead. Scalpels, on the other hand, not so much. But yeah, Adam 2 looks to be just slowly but surely crawling back. Dorsh able to get rid of the Northeast finally, so Adam 2 losing that. But this center is very strong. Adam 2's economy is much stronger than Dorsh's, but their defensive situation is much easier to work with. Mind you, most of that is reclaim, but like I said before, they've got plenty of reclaim to work with. Like, 1800 metal? That's... That's easily another... Okay, maybe not the rest of the game. The game is longer than three minutes, but still, that's still a long time. Okay, now it's gonna be a minute and a half. Regardless, Adam 2 has plenty of money to work with. Dante coming in here. Where's that ultimatum gone off to? They gotta kind of follow that thing, because... Ultimatums are a bit of a big deal. But I... Oh, there it is. As for the Grizzly, looks like it's dead again. Another Grizzly down. Adam 2 was able to stop that with the Penetrators, but like I said, it's just... Adam 2 playing really passively, I'm noticing. I mean, they have the Behemoth now. Okay, that's all well and good. Not sure why it's targeting this area here. Like, this could target the main base. Seriously, this could... Oh, no, it can't target the main base. Never mind. But it could target this area right here and just... Start to crack that open. Because it's not going to hit these units, ever. That behemoth will not hit the units. It will be able to hit these statics over here. But otherwise, Adam 2 going for that Dante. I think they're going to probably want to get the Dante push forward. Okay, there we go. That's the targeting they should be going for. Get rid of the units that are just rallied and not being attended to. Or... Failing that, get rid of the buildings, but yeah, get, getting the units softened up. Not a terrible idea. Doomsday Machine finally back up and running. Finally enough energy where it needs to be. The heck? Huh. I didn't realize those things closed up. Apparently they have an armored mode. Alright, cool. More I learned. Doomsday Machines do not come up very often in 1v1 play. And once again, with a heavy tank factor for the Pillagers and Reapers... Not sure that's going to work. The factory itself, almost dead. These halberds are not being really taken care of. But the factory itself, able to survive, gaining repair it up. Not dead yet. Door still ahead economically. Adam 2 running a bit lower on reclaim now. But, okay, they're still healthy on reclaim. Never mind. They're good. They're fine. But Dorsh now with the northeast and the southwest... Adam 2's position basically is going to come down to whether or not they can use that Dante to push out. Because that's what they're going to have to do. And the ultimatum hanging back for, I guess, another Grizzly? Or I guess because the Reapers. The Reapers will be a bit better target. But that's still that, that ultimatum up, that Penetrator up, Dante up. A lot of heavy units coming up. I'm pretty sure Adam 2 is a team-based player, because this is this feels very team game strategy to me, like really focusing on the heavy units, getting that getting that massive end-game army going, whereas Dorsh is focusing much more on the early game units. So you can see like, they've been just building ducks continuously throughout the game. And adding in a tactical silo, not a strategic nuke, just a tactical missile silo. Strategic nuke would take about five minutes from this point in order to be able to do anything. As I discussed before, and the Dante coming in. The catapult as well, just trying to get rid of a few small installations. But honestly, that catapult could move a bit further forward. And with that, probably take care of almost this entire expansion. And the behemoth, unfortunately, out. Okay, the behemoth focusing on the expansions. It's a lot I could get rid of here. I can almost. Okay, I cannot quite get rid of the heavy tank factory. Just out of range. And the missile silo forced to be paused a little bit. Conscious forced to retreat. That Dante is up, pushing forward, but 
Not enough support, unfortunately. Adam 2, that's the thing. They're not going for a lot of low-end units. They're not going for a lot of support units. They're going for just single heavy units and hoping to win the day with massive heavyweight units. But the problem is that Dorsh is able to just use that lighter weight force that they have to get in anywhere that Adam 2 does not have defenses set up. And Adam does not have defenses set up in general. They are focusing they were focusing a lot on mobile defenses first, like on units, that is. And they don't have a lot of stack defense to actually deal with anything coming in. So Dorsh able to pretty much march right into their main base. To Adam 2's main base. Adam 2's main base is open. It's like one Lotus that's not really a threat. The defender, that's not really a threat. A Banshee that, for boys, is probably not really a threat. Like, these boys are just walking, they're waltzing right in. And now the Missile Silo is done. We should see some Infernos being built up fairly soon. Indeed we do. And we should be seeing, at this point, Adam 2. And they're taking out the Southwest, but it's a little late. I mean, there are boys right inside the main base. Dante has been forced to retreat the entire way back, which, this is what I mean, there's not enough lightweight units to deal with these boys. And okay, the boys are dead, but so is the gunship plant. Adam 2 still has the hovercrafts, they still are getting some scalpels, but those aren't the lightest weight units either. And here's what the ultimatum was for, getting rid of that grizzly. Of course, the question is, will we get rid of the grizzly or try to get rid of anything else? Dorsh apparently aware of it. Is he going to go for the Grizzly or not? Boys wouldn't be a bad option either, just because of the amount of damage that ultimatums deal. Uh, whoa, what the... Oh. Oh. I totally misread that. Okay, yeah, that damage is really misleading, because piercing... Oh, it's not piercing. That's because it's piercing. That was actually an old bug. Just against large units, it deals a ton of damage. And now the Inferno coming in, getting rid of even more of Adam 2's economy. Not sure Adam 2 really has anything right now. The Dante is pushing in, but... But, like, Dorsh has twice... There's three times the economy. And while harassment has been happening, sort of, it's been really slow. Like... But that's... Well, that's probably going to be game. I mean, we'll see. I don't know. Adam 2's got... They still have the Dante. They have the Funnel Web coming up. They should have... Well, they have a bunch of Reclaim coming up. They're not totally out for the count yet, but it's going to be tough, because... I mean, the Doomsday Machines are completely gone. The Dante is basically the biggest thing they have. That's, as far as they're concerned, pretty much their trump card. They need to use that to push straight back into Dorsh's base... Tearing everything to shreds in the meantime. And then reclaim all that stuff. And then turn that back into units. Probably build another factory too. Or possibly just turn it into the funnel web. But the funnel web still has a minute left before it's done. Dante not in a terrible position, but nothing there to repair it. And the crane's really focusing on the reclaim because that's... Well, that's a huge part of the economy. That's going to get that funnel web up faster. But even then, even with that, it's still going to be really tough to push back. Catapult's in. Going for the Heavy Tank Factory, so we want that Catapult to get rid of the Heavy Tank Factory, which isn't actually building anything. I'm not sure what the point is at this point. Getting rid of these workers, sure. Getting rid of the Missile Silo, sure. Because, I mean, hitting that, the, the Inferno's getting killed would actually be a huge blow. And it looks like that is not the target at all. The target is, in fact, the Heavy Tank Factory. Well, it's down, so good job on that. That was destroyed. The Dante, unfortunately, having to deal with a pillager here, which will force it back for repair. Is it going to get repaired? Probably not. Oh, no, never mind, it will be. I don't know. Adam 2 is not sure what they're focusing on right now. What are they focusing on? They're building something. Oh, another fusion plant. Okay, are they focusing just heavily on overdrive now? Like, two fusion plants right here, right next to a metal extractor. Rather than building a wind generator to connect to the metal extractor, they're building a fusion plant, which... I'm not entirely sure about, because, yeah, okay, that's going to be about 70 energy going into the metal extractor, which should, I think, triple it? Or maybe quadruple it? So, like, six to eight metal? Okay, six, yeah. 
Roughly triples it. Not terrible, I suppose, but still. Not great, and that Dante stunned out and it's gonna be dead. That's another, that's nice use of Nats there by Dorsch. Really nice use of Nats there. I mean, overall, Dorsch's army composition has just been really intelligent. Well, Adam 2's army composition has been... It's clearly planned on an escalation idea, but the problem is they are not putting any support units in their army. At all. Like, they have nothing to actually maintain an army beyond just the giant units that... They're great if they're alive, but they can only deal with one area of the map at a time, and then when they're dead, that's it. And... Ow, oh, that funnel web, five seconds away from being completed, and a pillager takes out... Oh, no, that wasn't a pillager, that was, was an Aos. But yeah, Nuke takes out the Strider Hub, still gets finished up by Caretaker, but that Strider Hub is down. So Adam 2 is going to have to rebuild that Strider Hub if they want more Striders, and frankly, they shouldn't. They do not have the economy to support that, and they need to get a lightweight army to deal with this. The raiders and such to deal with the boys and pillagers. The Ducks are obviously a bit of a problem in that regard, but... At least get a lighter weight army to deal with that. It looks like Cloaked Catapult is pretty much their entire idea, their entire strategy right now is trying to push him with the Cloaked Catapult. I almost wouldn't be surprised if they were to try to push in with a commander, but it's clearly not at this point built up for military, and it would be a level or two before it's actually able to do so. Remember, custom commander, so it is just a matter of whether or not they go for those modules, but I don't know that they will. An army of ducks. How many ducks are even here? 32 ducks coming in to try to deal with the commander. Catapult not yet ready to deal with them. Doomsday Machine doing a pretty good job of... Or was that Doomsday Machine? Yeah, it is. Doomsday Machine in range. Doing a pretty good job of defending. That still leaving 13 ducks. And Adam 2's commander goes down. Taking out most of the rest of the ducks. But it looks like it'll probably involve the Doomsday Machine possibly killing the fusion reactor. Like, that was kind of Adam 2's last hope, was, I guess, to build this up as a big overdrive point. But that's gone. The fusion reactors are gone. The Doomsday Machine is no longer powered. And Adam 2 with 10 metal compared to Dorsh's 84. Like, still going strong. Adam 2 is still, still being resilient here, but I don't know. I don't really see a whole lot of hope. Just for that sheer economy difference. Like like I said, the Catapult has really been doing a lot to keep Adam 2 alive. But overall, it's just that Dorsh was able to get it with lightweight units. I still think a couple more Grizzlies wouldn't have been a bad idea. But clearly the sheer amount of ducks and just the use of ducks. The use of lightweight units in general when dealing with a massive heavyweight army. like Well, not massive, but an entirely heavyweight army. Paid off in spades. I mean, clearly the boys helped a lot, too. The boys and ducks together helped a ton. Grizzly right now isn't even really necessary. Where are those going? Ah, uh, right into the funnel web. Oh, they penetrate shields and, as a result, didn't manage to damage them too much. That funnel with 11,000 health will not be taken up by an Aos that easily. But it doesn't really matter. Dorsh has got... So much coming in. Ducks coming in from one side. There could be... Well, is anything coming in from the north? Not yet. Just the missile silo. But easily a larger army coming from the north. This funnel web not able to really do too much. It's sort of pushing things away, but if that catapult goes down... That's the thing. If the catapult dies, I think that'll be what gets what gets Adam 2 to just resign. I mean, they've been resilient so far, but they just have their main base, and even then there's not much there. They aren't even rebuilding the metal extractors, oddly enough. I really would have expected them to, but they're probably too distracted, just focusing on getting through these units. I mean, what are they even focused on right now? They're focused entirely... Oops. No, they're focused entirely on this battle. Apparently. Yeah, that's all they're focused on. Did they disconnect? I think they might have left the game. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're even selecting anything. I think this, this game ended... Yeah, Adam 2 left. Okay. The game the game had already ended. So that is going to... One sec. I prepared for this. I had tea. I had tea on hand. Alright, there we go. Back to normal. But yeah, this game is basically it. I mean, this game is over. Adam 2 is... Well, I'm just going to speed up to the end because this game is done. 
Not sure exactly when it finishes up, but it's very clearly over. Like, Adam 2's already left. I don't, I don't think Dorsch realized that, but yeah, Adam 2 exited the game. That was it. It was just a straight exit. Okay, well done, Dorsch. That was impressive. I'm, like I said, I don't totally agree on going for only one Grizzly at a time. But given what Adam 2 went for, it's just, the, ex the escalation made sense until Adam 2 started to lose ground. Once Adam 2 was losing ground, the Strider escalation stopped making sense at all. Because Striders are only really useful if you have a support army with them. They're not that useful on their own. Now, I realize in team games, they often get used, but in team games, the Striders are supported, like large team games. My understanding is they're supported by other Striders. So there's still support, it's just there's so much money going around that you can do you can do the support with other Striders. Like Strider to Strider support. This is just a weird game. I honestly wasn't sure what to say about it because it was Striders everywhere on one side and then nothing but light units on the other, which the light units are going to win. If for no other reason, then they can just get around wherever they need to, whenever they need to, and deal with things. Sheesh. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I am going to have another game, much shorter game, in just a minute. It's going to be between Ivan D and Rar on Altered Crossing, and that'll be up in a minute or two, so stay tuned.